So, ladies and gents, did you realise watching Stranger Things Season 4 that there was a fat-shaming problem? Did you? Bet you didn't. But one person who did, who has written two articles now that I can find, yes, two articles on different uh, providers, different websites, is spouting off this nonsense. Emma Flint crying about it. And it is utter nonsense, so we're going to have a good laugh about it. There's an underlying toxicity to season four of Stranger Things. It's ironic that we keep doing this to celebrities, particularly women, and then wonder why society has a massive self-esteem issue on its hands. Now this is on The Independent. What's this? Am I seeing deja vu? Stranger Things season five needs to fix the show's fat shaming problem. Hopper's weight loss shouldn't be a punchline. Yeah, why can't it be? What, since when is losing weight bad now? Why? It should be applauded when people lose weight. Actually, it's very difficult to lose weight. It's an accomplishment to lose weight. It's very, very good to lose weight. Obviously, within limits. You know, you've got two extremes, I guess, on Stranger Things. Nancy, the actress, definitely anorexic. But the point is... It should be applauded when you lose weight. Why do what is what is going on here? What are we really living in this clown world? Yeah, of course we are. Why am I even asking this? So two hours ago she released this article uh, on the Independent, uh, and then on Digital Spy uh, again today. I think this was about five hours ago, if I remember rightly, from looking at it. Uh, she released this article as well. So let's take a look at the underlying toxicity to season four of Stranger Things. Now this is the biggest absolute turd blossom I've seen in a while, right? Um, and I saw this and I was like, this, what drivel is this? Because it came up on one of my notifications that, oh, you should read this. And I was like, I really shouldn't read this. This will annoy me. But then I was like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna read this because it'd make a good video. A lot of good things have come from the latest season of Stranger Things, but the way fans are pitting its female cast against each other isn't one of them. This woman is obsessed with, like, image. There's no escape in the hype around season four of Stranger Things. Love it or hate it, the latest series has broken the internet with its emotional roller coaster. Quite literally, Netflix experienced 13,000 outages as fans tried to tune in at 8am on July 1st. Uh, but underneath the surface of its fandom lurks a seedy underbelly, centred around female actors and their looks. I mean, are you ri really? But underneath the surface of its fandom lurks a seedy underbelly. Am I fucking reading this about Stranger Things? Good God. Christ. And you know what? Statistically speaking, scientifically proven, in fact, from stats, do you know who give women the most shit? <gasps> it's women. Naturally, with any TV show, and especially one where the vast majority of its characters are incredibly good-looking, appearance is going to be mentioned. What show are you watching? We've all seen... <laughs> the vast majority of its characters are good... Really? Alright then. We've all seen the Steve Harrington memes about looking respectfully at his shirtless chest. However, while comments about actors being hot as expected... What shouldn't be accepted is the comparison aspect. Yeah, it should. Do you know why that should be accepted? Because to determine whether one believes one is attractive, you put them against the comparable. Otherwise, we're all just attractive. And you know what? We're not. Unfortunately, some people are pig ugly. It's just the way it goes. It's unfortunately genetics. There's nothing you can do about it. But to determine whether one is attractive or not, it is a comparison. One deems one attractive, one deems one not. Otherwise, just this weird grey blobby mass of sameness. Comparison is absolutely unequivocally required. That's why you can say, well I like big tits, because I've compared them to small tits. I did more with big tits. Small tits, couldn't do too much with. You know? It's like saying I like a big ass, or... You know, I like, a, I like a pert bottom, not too round. Because too round gets a bit in the way. Or, I like a really slim girl. 
Or I like a curvy girl, because I can grab hold of them. I'm saying loads of misogynistic things. Oh, they're not really misogynistic. I'm saying blatantly deemed to be misogynistic things for a reason. <laughs> Just to piss people off. Uh, this is the equivalent of what I would do on Twitter. The, this is my shit post on Twitter, basically. You know how how are you going to know, ladies and gents, that you don't like a curvy curvy bird, right? Unless you, <laughs> oh, I can't even say it. How are you going to know that you don't like a curvy bird unless you've done a curvy bird from behind and you've had stuff to grab hold of? Now, obviously, there is a spectrum. <laughs> Of size to weigh in on that, and comparison is absolutely acceptable to determine what one appreciates. <laughs> and sometimes one doesn't even have to partake in that to know what one appreciates. It's merely a comparison. Just thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> anyway, you don't have to search far online to see threads of fans asking who is better looking, A or B. The reason this comparison is so troubling, however, is because it's primarily aimed at the women in the cast. Specifically, Millie Bobby Brown and Sadie Sink. I don't know who's Sadie Sink. Is that the one who plays Nancy? Who is Sadie Sink? Who is Sadie Sink? Is... Oh, she's the one who plays Max. A weird comparison. All right, is Millie Bobby Brown or or <laughs> very strange comparison, but all right. One of the top Google suggestions when you type in their names is Millie Bobby Brown or Sadie Sink, and once you click that, you enter down a rabbit hole that leads to some seriously not suitable for work places. What are you doing with your time? No one does that. Why would you Google that? It's so weird. The show has won countless awards and is some of the finest acting many of us have seen in years. You have not been watching much then, have you? The acting's good, but it's not the finest acting in years. So are we seriously saying there's nothing more to these women than their looks? Just to throw it out there, when you are just comparing looks, there is nothing else to the woman just than their looks. That's how it works. Same goes for men. It's universal. It's not sexist. It's equality. This stands for everyone. When you're just comparing their looks, that's all you're bothered about. Why is this a difficult thing to grasp? What is wrong with people? This is really standard human things that we do. Why is women versus women still the norm? You don't see it for the male actors of the show. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Like, people comment on stuff like that. Women do comment on stuff like that. Women are worse than men at, on, like, on some of these things. Jesus. Anyway, our culture continues to pit women against one another. And women pit women against one another. With our looks being utilised as the main currency. This woman is saying that. Just as an FYI, there is very clearly a bias here. There is clearly a vested interest in why looks shouldn't be part of society's um, sort of, you know, grading method, according to this woman. I would, uh, I stand by that. Um, Utilises the main character. If society sees something they like about you, they champion it. But if they see something they don't, they tear it down by pointing out that someone has the desirable part you're lacking. What is wrong with people wanting to be better? What? 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 Looks are still valued over talent. But yeah, generally... Like, you know, I'll agree with that, but talent is, like, important as well. Um, and then she goes on to, like, degrade. Like, she's talking about Megan Fox. She's like, yeah, if they were regarded as bad actors, they'd be criticised for only getting airtime because of their appearance. Similar to the criticism of Megan Fox's appearance as experience for the vast majority of her career. Are you saying that Megan Fox isn't a good actress, then? Because she's not talented and she's just hot. That's weird. It's ironic that we keep doing this to celebrities. No, everyone does it to everyone. And then wonder why society is a massive self-esteem issue. No, that's social media. Get the fuck off TikTok. And get the fuck off Instagram. That is literally why we have a self-esteem issue. Children should not be on TikTok or Instagram. And if your child is, get them off. You're a bad parent. 
I will absolutely say that to the cows come home. You're a bad parent if your child is on TikTok or Instagram. It is not good for them. It is proven to not be good for them. It hurts their self-esteem. Get them off social media now. We shouldn't be surprised that the way we obsess over attractiveness facilitates harsher critiques of appearance over anything. Anyway, whatever. This woman's insane. And then she goes, Stranger Things Season 5 needs to fix the show's fat shaming problem. Remember, ladies and gents, this woman. There's nothing wrong with fat shaming, right? Like, there is literally, there's nothing wrong with fat shaming at all. You're not going to sit there and tell me that an anorexic person is absolutely fine. Like, you're not. It's not good. And the same should not be said to the opposing side of that spectrum, right? Like, literally, treat it equal. Like, I can sit here and I can say about myself, I am at an unhealthy weight, right? Not not in terms of body composition, like I'm lean, like I've got a six-pack and stuff, but my weight is, is actually quite unhealthy for my size. Height to weight ratio, this would be deemed unhealthy. I can, I can own that. I can admit that. Why can't fat people? Why can't anorexic people? Because <sighs> they're deluded and we live in a world without accountability where everything's deemed to be fine. Oh, Stranger Things is no stranger to fat phobia. Shut the fuck up. From the beginning, body diversity has been distinctly lacking in the town of Hawkins. Well, they've got every other kind of diversity. Now you want body diversity as well? What is wrong with you? Those, you couldn't, what? It wasn't good enough to have the gays and the lesbians in this recent, I, I, I don't care, by the way. Like, I literally couldn't give a shit. But you've got a lesbian love story this episode, uh, this season. You've got a gay coming out story from Will, where he clearly fancies his best friend. And now you're like, well, there's not enough diversity. We need body diversity. Shut up. You, you've got the interracial ginger couple. You've got literally every diversity you could possibly want. But you're like... Fat phobia. That's the hill you're going to die on. Fat? Really? You're insane. Those who very fucking these people are literally mental. This, this, this is this is a mental health crisis. This, this is mentally handicapped people. Uh, those who varied from the standard fit were swiftly removed. We're thinking of you, Barb. Oh, shut up. Well, they became a butt of every weight joke that could be not so subtly dropped in. Throughout, Hopper has been the main focus of these jokes. Yeah, because he's been fat. His weight treated as light comic relief. Yeah, because... What? What? So it's fine when fat people make jokes about themselves, but not when other people do? Shut up. But season four took that so-called teasing to new heights with his sudden weight loss almost celebrated by his loved ones. Oh no. You lost weight and you're healthier. We definitely shouldn't congratulate you for that. You... You... What? Okay. Comments about him having shrunk are commonplace, even from himself, which only serves to highlight the discomfort Hopper has uh, being the fat one. Those around him seemingly choose to forget he's been in his own hellscape of a prison camp. Ah, oh, right, yeah. This isn't a man who decided to lose weight. He's been beaten, tortured, and starved into submission. Yet, all that anyone except for Joyce talks about is that Hopper isn't fat anymore. Probably trying to make some light of the fact that he's been a prisoner? You idiot. It's not just the characters in the show. Fans have been quick to praise actor David Harbour's transformation because he's proud of himself. Dipshit. With one uh, post joking that prison may be a good way for people to lose those stubborn pounds while adding that Harbour is a good looking man who made the most of his looks this season. Harbour has addressed the comments about his weight in a recent interview with British GQ. During the course of the conversation, he explains how a regime of intermittent fasting and Pilates helped him lose eight pounds in just eight months. I was about 270... Uh, and then we shot season four as around 190. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Having weight, particularly weight loss, define a character's development arc is such a troubling message to put out there. One that can't be excused by the get out of jail free card that the 80s were just like that. Authenticity doesn't and shouldn't factor into fat shaming, no matter how hard some might try. Uh, fat shaming is absolutely fine. It is absolutely fine to fat shame. If you want to be accepted in society that you're fat, you should absolutely 100% accept in society that people, right, can accept that you're fat, but can also accept the truth that it's unhealthy to be fat. Like, let's not ask, let's not ask for, you know, statistics, facts, basic understanding of science to be thrown out just because you want to be accepted because you're fat. That's utterly ludicrous. We can accept that you're fat, and yeah, it's fine to be fat, 
as long as you understand that it's bad to be fat. Like people can accept that. It's like the like for instance the NHS, right? The NHS in the UK, you guys in the US have wanted a universal healthcare for ages, right? Pays out your taxes and you get universal healthcare or whatever. I'll tell you why that may be bad for you guys in the States is the amount of obesity you guys have and the amount of shit that you're going to be paying in tax due to people's obesity. Like the NHS is just this bleeding dry pool of money that just keeps being poured down the drain. And we keep funding other people's unhealthy attitudes to life. Without telling them and just going, that's fine. No, it's not. It's not. Anyway, this article was insane. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out my Teespring store. Supporting the channel via this way does go a long way. But also, not only that, you do get to wear some awesome merch. These are one-of-a-kind designs designed for me by my graphic designer. We, of course, have our Clown World line, which is uh, in mugs, hoodies, t-shirts. We've got Space Jeebus. Uh, and then for something a little bit different, we, of course, have right down at the bottom right here, we have our Pulsar GTIR. Also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out and supporting my second channel, which is Car Nonsense. This is a vlog and car channel. You can find links to this in the description box along with my Teespring. Please do consider supporting.